Hey everybody, Sean Tierney here from theautomationschool.com and in today's episode of The Automation Show, John DeTellum from Siemens is back and this time he's showing us how to use TIA Portal to add distributed I.O. to our S7-1500. And then he also shows us how to add in a drive by importing all of his existing parameters and then setting it up in the system as well. And even going as far as testing the system to make sure the motor turns. So with that, here's John DeTellum from Siemens. Hi, John DeTellum here. Again, uh, working through some uh, engineering uh, efficiencies inside the uh, framework known as the TIA portal or the Totally Integrated Automation Portal, where we have the, the capability of configuring our automation devices all in one framework. Last time I, I did a, a short demonstration and highlighted the, uh, the efficiency of integrating and uh, engineering or configuring the PLC together with an HMI and walking through the configuration of some basic uh, auto-generated system diagnostics for the IO devices, the PLC into the HMI. Today, we're gonna finish the configuration of this hardware kit, demo kit that we call the REE, Realizing Engineering Efficiencies, by integrating the remote IO device, the keypad um, display panel on Profinet, and we'll integrate the drive and um, configure some basic access or motion control uh, between the PLC and the drive so that we can spin the motor as a kind of a getting started and finish off the basic hardware configuration of our kit. Again, our uh, framework is the TIA portal. Last time we started in the hardware configuration tab of the portal view and used our add new devices to configure a controller um, in our case, we did an unspecifies and, and detected it, and we added in a uh, new device such as the uh, seven inch touch panel. And we basically ended up with this solution here of our integrated uh, project file with a PLC and HMI. We have now the power to extend that project file with the IO and networking and the key panel. Um, and we could select and use hardware devices that we find in the catalog. Um, and this could be third-party devices as well. Um, but we also have the advantage of just doing an online detection of these devices as well. So we'll go up here, since we're sitting in front of our hardware in the, in the workshop, and do a hardware detection of Profinet devices. And we'll get a nice dialog that detects um, how we want to communicate out of our, our PC uh, or our laptop out to the network via, in this case, Profinet or Ethernet and I will select the uh, remote I.O. device and the key panel device for uh, hardware detection. Just read in the uh, properties of the firmware revisions and the configuration of the I.O. that exists in those digital ins and digital outs. Saves a lot of time and ensures we have the right uh, configuration of those I.O. devices. It's gonna automatically bring that into my offline project file and let those be represented um, here in the network view of the hardware or the devices and the networks. And then once I have it, I'm going to go ahead and uh, set those up so they have the same look and feel as they do in the hardware um, rack of the system. And then we want to configure those or drag and drop a connection to those for the uh, PLC. Now you can hear it have a selection of connection to Profinet interface number one on the uh, uh, ET200SPIO, our IO device as it is shown is here. And then um, make the uh, similar connection up to the KP8. And you'll see the uh, ability to turn on the visibility of the IP addresses and validate the configuration that exists in there. Now on this remote I.O., there are two safety modules and we haven't enabled safety yet in our system. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete those out of the uh, configuration because it's not gonna like the presence of those safety devices in a system that doesn't have safety enabled in the PLC. I can still have them in my hardware configuration of my installation and have them wired and configured. But as long as I leave them out of the configuration in the project file, um, we'll be able to start in a uh, standard non-fail-safe um, environment. Now let's go ahead and just do a download of this new configuration of this extended functionality that we have for our PLC and HMI. Uh, we'll 
get the same load preview that we get um, before. Uh, it's going to basically give us a highlight of uh, extended devices and hardware configuration of the PLC, um, require a kind of a restart of the PLC to uh, uh, run mode to accept those hardware changes that we've just implemented. And then we'll go connect um, online to see how we did with configuring uh, this new this new this new situation. Um, and right away that the engineering framework is going to give us um, clear, um, consistent diagnostics regarding our configuration and provide us the fact that these new components and hardware configuration um, objects that we've detected into our system haven't been commissioned with an identifier that the running PLC can um, identify it in the field. So we've got to commission those nodes with a identifier or a Profinet um, device name. So we just use this little configuration or commissioning tool. We do an update list to look at all the hardware devices that exist in the field. And um, once we pass that identifier, that IO device underscore one, um, down to the device, it's going to be recognized on the Ethernet. It's going to get its packet of information from the PLC, and it's going to publish itself with an IP address um, for um, its existence on the network. Uh, so we'll finish with that with a remote IO, and we'll do the key panel um, as well. Same process, same consistent usability for um, I.O. devices and HMI and drives and other components on Profinet, including third party. And then once we've completed that commissioning, the PLC is going to go out there and communicate to those devices, set up their configurations, and we're going to get that solid green state that we expect in the solution. The second step that we want to do is uh, integrate our drive. Um, and our drive has already been commissioned by our drives team. Um, with all the parameters required to configure uh, its interface to that motor or control that motor safely. So in this case, we want to actually upload the program or configuration that's been done in the drive. Uh, so I'm going to use the uh, upload device, which can be used for PLCs um, and drives, and upload that configuration or project into our uh, actual offline project. Once I upload it again, I'm going to have to do the same uh, hardware configuration and define its connection onto a specific PLC or HMI uh, because uh, there could be multiple PLCs in this project file um, in a case of a complex lines, line or system. So we'll go ahead and uh, allow that to be uploaded. It's going to take some time to get the uh, full parameter set uploaded out of the drive. And again, it drops down here. We'll make it look and feel like it does in the hardware kit. We'll go offline and commission or configure the connection of the drive to the PLC. So now we have a uh, parameter set up uh, for inputs and outputs between the drive and the PLC. Again, we'll need to do a download to the PLC to get that configuration of that drive device into um, the PLC as a remote I.O. and an identification of it um, connected to that uh, Profinet device, and then we'll commission or validate the drive, just to validate that we can spin the motor. And um, one of the parameters that comes up in a project tree is a, a control panel uh, directly under the uh, configuration of the drive. We'll go online to the drive, um, similar to we done in the other PLC cases, except the, uh, the warning about the fact we're going to bump the motor um, and do some reset of the configuration and then go ahead and specify a speed, a command in there so that we can uh, bump the motor. And then you can see the actual value come back into this commissioning wizard um, to provide um, indication that we have successfully uh, um, spun or bumped the motor. And then once we get a little bit more confidence, we can uh, increase the speed and validate that we get a response as expected with the actual feedback that comes back from the setup. We'll go ahead and stop the drive um, in this commissioning wizard, uh, reset it, disable the um, power, and then exit out of this uh, commissioning wizard. Now what we want to do is integrate the drive or the motion functionality into a technology object within the PLC so that we 
actually has speed control, uh, motion control in our PLC that's uh, more easy to uh, integrate into our PLC program once we want to implement those complex things as uh, positioning and kinematics, um, or even as simple things as a speed axis. And this basically is a nice little wizard that allows me to kind of make the connection from a, a default motion object to an actual hardware drive. Um, I just map out the, uh, the graphical connection. And in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and accept the default parameters and I'll load that configuration of that uh, um, axis or motion into the online PLC. And we'll test our ability to um, configure or control motion now directly out of our PLC. Got green status, everything seems to be uh, kosher with our configuration of our PLC. I'll go ahead and confirm uh, some diagnostics between the PLC and the HMI and activate the PLC's control panel. And that will give the drive permission to allow the PLC to control it through the software uh, commission wizard, enable the drive, and then I'll just activate the uh, forward command and you'll see the current value reply back from the drive for the current um, set point. So again, in summary, we completed the hardware configuration of the setup for the hardware that we have in front of our uh, engineering station, um, all within the uh, framework of the TIA portal. Uh, and that included the PLC, the IO associated with the PLC, the uh, HMI, the keypad panel, remote IO, uh, including um, the drive and uh, the configuration of a motion function uh, for speed control of that access. And um, the big value prop there is we're doing all this um, engineering of our automation solution within the one single framework of the totally integrated automation portal, uh, reducing the engineering tool sets that are uh, required to bring together our solutions. Well, I enjoyed that. I hope you did too. I hope you found it helpful. Um, I actually don't have all that hardware, so I could not have done that video myself. So thank you, John, for taking on time out of your day to put that together for us. And uh, for those of you watching, if you want to keep our show going and you want to keep the website up, um, you can actually now support the site over at patreon.com forward slash automation and then use your Patreon login to access the automationblog.com ad free. In addition to that, depending on which level you select, you'll actually get free downloads like free sample code, free videos and free articles. So check that out over at patreon.com forward slash automation. And with that, that's the end of this episode. Until next time, my friends, peace.